Hi everyone, it's James here from Pro Tools Expert, and you find me in an audio test lab, very much in unfamiliar territory. Um, I've procured for the day this test rig. Now, this is an Audio Precision APX555 audio analyzer. This basically is the audio industry standard testing kit for audio interfaces. Now, usual fodder for me is kind of get the stuff, play with it, have a have a mess around and produce a track, produce some music. That's what you guys as end users do. But just occasionally we like to get some actual numeric data and a lot of different companies are now throwing out these numbers and uh, giving us frequency response numbers and uh, dynamic range numbers and all that sort of stuff. What does it mean? What do those numbers mean? And how can we use this information to inform our buying decisions? So, uh, so we have test rig and we have a selection of interfaces kind of along similar lines, price points. Uh, we have the Apogee Quartet, which is currently retailing for around about 1,400 euros. We have the RME Babyface, which is currently around about the 700 euro mark. We have the Arturia Audio Fuse, again, about the 600 euro mark. And kind of to put things in perspective, because there are about a billion of these things out there, we have a Focusrite 6i6, which again, around about the sort of 200 euro mark. And we thought we would run four, yes, four tests. We're going to run what's called an EIN, equivalent input noise test. We're going to run a round trip latency test. We're going to run a dynamic range output test. And we're going to do a frequency response of the input test. Now, these are four of the more common uh, tests that are done by many, if not all, of the audio interface manufacturers who are out there in the real world. And we thought we'd got a pretty good cross-section of interfaces. So the first test we're going to do is the EIN, the equivalent input noise. And for that, we route from the audio output of the audio precision testing unit thing into the mic pre of our first device, the audio fuse. Uh, we are set at 48K for this test. And we basically get two readings. We get a gain setting with the gain on the um, audio fuse is all the way up and we get a noise level setting. We load it with a dummy load of 150 ohms. So the first thing we have to do is do the sweep. Uh, this is with a tone at 1K and here we go. So the input gain we're getting is 50.897 dBFS and the next measure we need to get is the background noise. So we need to change the input to be 150 ohm load and we hit start and we have a noise limit of minus 78.575 dBFS. So with the amazing use of this telephone in calculator mode we take the noise signal we take away 50.897 and we are left with a figure of minus 129.472 dBU linear, no A weighting, no Fletcher Munson curves. This is a purist response. So for this test, we're gonna look at the input frequency response of the mic pre. Everyone talks about how their mic pre sound amazing uh, and how they do or don't have a color to them. So we thought doing the input response of the mic pre would show us some of that color. Uh, you can see here we've had to make some actual assumptions and measurements and presets on the input gain. We're going for minus 10, or as damn close as we can get, minus 10 dBFS. So that's our starting point. So we've got a nice big graph on the screen that you'll be able to see. Uh, again, the connection is exactly the same. We're coming out of the um, analog output into the mic pre, and let's do the sweep. So there you go, we're sweeping from 20 hertz, theoretically the lowest point humans can hear, to 20 kilohertz, the highest point humans can hear. But quite frankly, most of us don't have 20 to 20 hearing. We just don't. Cymbals, overheads, and other such, and loud guitars have destroyed that long ago. Um, it's pretty flat. Now, the interesting thing is these two numbers here. The um, upper level is always going to be zero because it's where the um, curve is going to. The lower number is the important one. So we actually take this number, this 0.298, and divide it by two. So our input frequency response is plus minus 0.149 dB 20 to 20. 
So the next test is our round trip latency test. Again, it's all done by the magic that is uh, the audio precision unit. We come out into the in and out of the baby face in this case, back into the audio precision unit. Uh, this is a very simple test. It's basically a broadband pulse and it measures the time it takes to go round the unit, the round tripness of it, if you like. So all we have to do is hit start. It is the quickest of all the tests and we're actually doing this one twice. We're gonna do it at 48K and at 96K to see if there is any variation between um, drivers and hardware and all that sort of stuff at the two most common, let's face it, sample rates. At this version, which is at 96K, we are getting a round trip latency of 3.081 milliseconds. That's pretty quick between you and me. So our final test is the output dynamic range and we are starting with the Focusrite 6i6. Now this is by far the cheapest of the four units we're testing. Uh, and you might ask why do one so cheap? Well, quite frankly, we wanted to see if there is any point in going from a 200 euro interface up to a six, seven, 1400 euro interface. Um, so once again, we get a maximum input level we get a noise figure, we subtract the two, and we get a dynamic range figure. So let's start with the input figure. Okay, that gives us 14.620. And then we switch off the generator. And we do our second sweep, which gives us our noise. A dynamic range of an output dynamic range of 98.482 dB. So that's all four tests done with all four of our audio interfaces. It's now time to, for me to do some number crunching and some stats and all that sort of boring stuff that generally we don't do back in the studio. So it's back to me in the studio. So it's a couple of weeks later, we're back in the studio and the numbers have been crunched, the tables have been formulated and the graphs have been produced. Now what I could do is sit here and regurgitate those results to you for the next 25 minutes, but that would be pointless. So what I suggest you do is if you're watching this video in YouTube land, click the link down there, which I promise we'll put to the main Pro Tools Expert article for this video. And there you will find all the data and analysis of these results. However, saying that, I think it's well worth pointing out one overarching result, if you like, from the whole test. It was a very interesting day, and I think it pointed out for all the numbers and all the stats and all the graphs, pretty much any interface you buy these days from a reputable brand, from a brand that you've heard of, is going to sound incredible. The only thing holding back your music production is you, and I'm really sorry to say that out loud, but it's true. So once again, please do check out the main results article with all the goodies and stats and numbers and graphs. Okay, there's a table and a graph. And the full kind of analysis of this whole project, which was incredibly interesting. And thanks to the unknown audio test facility that let me take over their place for the day. So I hope you enjoyed that. My name's James Ivey, and I'll see you again very soon for some more Gear Talk.